Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, we are going to have an overview of the Nano Pi R4s as well as the installations of OpenWRT and later on, we will do some tests to see the performance of this device running OpenWRT. This is the Nano Pi R4s and it is currently up and running. This is how it looks like with a metal case. So, right, so let me just turn off the power, remove all the cable so that you can have a clearly look. All right, so here is the Nano Pi R4S. So on this side, we have three ports, one, two, three, and four. And the first port is a USB Type-C. It is where you connect the power adapter to powering on the device. And next, we have this one port. And then we have the LAN port. So both of them is gigabit. And then we have the reset button right here. This one is blank. And then on this side, we have two USB 3.0 port and then SD card slot. So this one is micro SD card. As well, you have a tripod mouse if you want to mount your device somewhere on the wall or with a tripod. And then this one is blank. And now let's check at the back. So yes, we have this one is the rubber holder so that you can keep your device in a steady form. The Nano Pi R4S is powered by the Rockchip RK3399. It is a hexa core SOC, which means six cores. According to the device spec, it is advised to use a 5 on 3 m power adapter and in this video, I'm using the Raspberry Pi official adapter because it has 5 on and 3 m Actually, it is 5.1, so it has some power supply function that protects like overload is over current and overheat. So it should be really good to use this power adapter for the Nano Pi. And we will also need a micro SD card to install the OS on the device. So you can install OpenWRT or Ubuntu or all the Linux distribution where you can find on the homepage of the projects or you can find on somewhere on the internet. The installations of OpenWRT on this Nano Pi are for as is very easy. You just need to go to download.openwrt.org and find the link to the device architecture and just get the correct firmware. So after the firmware is downloaded, you will have a .img or .gz file. And then you just need to use Rufus application or if you are on Linux, you can use DD command to write this firmware to your micro SD card. So once you've done all the steps, you can just insert the micro SD card to your Nano Pi R4S and boot up the device. For this device, we have the one port and the LAN port. So the one port is Ethernet 0 and the LAN port is Ethernet 1 if you are using OpenWRT. So please be aware that if you are using the snapshot version, there will be no Lucy pre install So you may need to connect your router to an upstream router with a working internet connection and then run OPKG update and OPKG install Lucy to install that. So now we are going to perform an open speed test with the Nano Pi R4S as well as the iPub 3 test. Let's have a look at our network diagram. So this is the Nano Pi R4S. It is running GSCP client on the one interface. And then on the LAN interface, it is running the SCP server as well. So it is connected to my computers on the 2.5 gigabit internet adapter. Let's go to the Lucy page. And right here, we can see that we have one active GSCP leases. And this is my computer, so 192.168.1.209. Let's have a quick check at network interfaces. So on the BR LAN, we have Ethernet 1. And then for the 1 interface, we have Ethernet 0. 
Okay, so let's me open the open speed test server as 10.24.0.1 colon 3000. So let me just minimize that and let's run beamant dash p and then ethernet zero to monitor the one interface and i will also run another instance so let me just open another one 192.168.1.1 login so that we can check the cpu usage so let's run edge top all right perfect so it should be right here let me just minimize it a little bit and okay so let's just arrange everything nicely and actually i want to run another one so that we can see the overall cpu uses by running the top command so 192.168.1.1 and this one let's run top okay so that is all we need so let me just minimize this tab i think this should be enough okay all right so we all set and let hit the star button so we are having 900 and 80s mbps download and you can see the rx is 107 megabyte per second with the cpus only using two cores right here and the same on upload we have yep most likely the same with the core utilized by two cores so it is at 80 percent idle for the download and the upload so let's run the test one more time let me just refresh the page star and let's see all right so 97 percent idle and yes we are running at two cores so for around 1 gbps downloads we have the cpu at 75 percent idols and for the upload or up to 1 gbps uploads we have 80 percent idle so i'm not sure if this is the correct number because from what i know the maximum throughput of an gigabit interface is only 330 or 40 something so this result quite impressed me okay never mind so let me go to my uh, test server this is the dell optiplex 7010 which is this device okay so i'm going to start the ipub server so it will be ipub 3 dash s okay and now with my command die on my computer so my window 10 i'm going to the ipub 3 directory and i will issue a command ipub 3 and then dash c which means client and then one and then ten dot forty two dot zero dot one and hit enter all right so we are running at 110 megabyte per second 936 megabit per second with the cpu at 83 percent idols or only one call we've been maximized let's run one more time all right so Yes, still one call at 80% and the total is 83% idle. So with these results, we can strongly believe that the Nano Pi R4S should be able to handle gigabit connection. So let's go to network and then firewall. So right here, we can see that the shop where of that thing already enabled. So let me try to disable this and let me save and apply the change. okay so now we are running the test with no shortware of starting which means the default configuration when you just got the router so let me just refresh this page and click the start button 
and still the same we are having around well 900 mbps download 117 megabyte per second at 74 percent cpu idle with two core being utilized and the same for upload the cpu is at 76 percent idle with one core at 89 and another core at 50. okay so let me run it for another time let's go All right, so still we have 94% idle when we are running around 930 something and let me see 76% idles at the same upload speed. And in this side, you can see that the NanoPi R4S or the LED is blinking crazy. And I think it should be very happy to handle this throughput all right so let's try with ipub3 we cannot forget it so let's go okay something is wrong let me try ipub3 connection refills mm -hmm. let's try shortware cause connection aborted okay never mind let's refresh the connection ipub3 oh sorry ipub3 dash s and then let's go all right so this time we had 110 112 megabyte per second and the cpu is at 86 percent idle let's go for another round So we can see that with shortwave offload being disabled, we have a little little decrease in the bandwidth and a little bit increase in the CPU loaded or the CPU utilization. But uh, for this NanoPi R4S, we can see that shortwave offloading didn't make any like really big differences. Let's move on with the Wygod VPN speed test. Here I have my Wi-Gard interface up and running. It is connected to a VPN server in Singapore and it is from VULTR. As usual, we will be using edge top and top command to monitor the CPU utilization. The download speed reached 190 Mbps with the CPU at 57% idle. The load is thread between six cores of the CPU. The same for upload, we have around 165 MPS with the CPU at 59% idle. In this test, the download speed goes up to 200 MPS with the CPU at 53% idle. The upload speed is only 50 Mbps, but it is something to do with the bandwidth of the ISP, not the limitation from the router. Let's run the last test with a different server. We can see that the router handles 200 Mbps got VPN connection with around 45% CPU utilization. This is also the limit from my internet service provider because I am using a 200 Mbps internet plan. It is time for the open VPN speed test. We are still using the same server that runs the Wygod VPN. Let's start the first test. As you can see, we have 200 MBPS download with the CPU at 80% idle. The load is only on one core of the CPU, and we have the same result for the upload speed test. For the second test, unfortunately, the download speed is only 30 MBPS but the upload speed remains the same. 20% of the CPU resources is being utilized for 200 MBPS of OpenVPN throughput. 
from the test, we can clearly see that the NanoPi R4 S handle both Wygod VPN and OpenVPN smoothly. And with iPerf and OpenSpeed test, we can also confirm that the NanoPi R4 S can handle gigabit internet connection in proper way. That is all for this video. And I'm going to end the video here. As always, if you have any idea what kind of test I should do with the NanoPi R4S, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.